The great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it as it is written. Do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming seated on a donkey's colt. At first the disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had given this miraculous sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look, the whole world has gone after him. Keep processing.
If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is sin. We cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for you and for his sake. Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself 
by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you can, please rise to the Holy Gospel blessing. The Holy Gospel is according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And these words uh, immediately follow the lesson that was read just before we processed in. Now, among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth, and dies, it remains. If it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, Save me from this hour, but for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that stood there and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered. This voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of the world come. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So the crowd answered him, We have heard from the Lord, Jesus said to them. The light is among you for a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. The one who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. When Jesus had said these things, he departed and hid himself from them. Though he had done so many signs before them, they still did not believe in him, so that the word spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe. For again Isaiah said, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, lest they see with their eyes and understand with their heart and turn, and I would heal them. Isaiah said these things because he saw his glory and spoke of him. Nevertheless, many, even of the authority of the Pharisees, they did not confess it so that they would not be put out of the synagogue, for they loved the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O
on the temperature gauge. And I uh, saw the undesirable needle get closer and closer to the hot. And as that happened, well, it turned out that the, uh, the engine died because with these old, old cars, the heat is so intense that you get what's called uh, a, you know, yeah, a vapor lock. A vapor lock, exactly, right. I was just looking at my mechanic over here. Yeah. <laughs> you get a vapor lock. And uh, I think the crowd got more of a kick out of me and one of the youth pushing the car through the parade <laughs> than, than anything else than when the car was running on its own. And, and in a sense, that's what we see uh, happening today with Jesus entering Jerusalem. It's a type of parade. Uh, they're not waving uh, uh, you know, uh, flags like we do, but they're waving palm branches, which uh, has quite a significance. Uh, the waving of branches like that was uh, a type of uh, way of honoring a, uh, a, a loyalty. And uh, so Jesus is being treated as, as the people themselves uh, said, that this is the king of Israel, as they sang out those great words, uh, chanting a chorus from, uh, again, they, uh, the music was not a, a, a uh, John Philip Sousa march, but it was a, a chorus. They sang out Hosanna, save now. And that, that expression, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, that comes from Psalm 118, and, and the Psalms were the hymn book of the Old Testament uh, believers and worship. So it has a lot of co uh, connections with, uh, with our parade in that sense. And uh, certainly the crowds are glorifying Jesus as, as a king. And uh, in the motion picture, uh, Alexander, which depicts the conquests of Alexander parades through the central corridor of this ancient and glorious city mounted on his stately white horse, flanked by his generals, and behind him follow rank after rank of soldiers who have dedicated their lives to uh, Alexander the Great's uh, military victories and service. And so again, it's a, it's a procession of glorification. And, they, and what did they do in that movie? It shows people using branches. And, and again, it just uh, emphasized honor, honor and glory. Well, in a similar way, a large, the large crowd that lined up the road when Jesus rode in on the donkey appears for sure to be giving Jesus this glory. And our text says the next day, this would be the day uh, after Jesus married the sister of Lazarus, you know, the one whom Jesus raised from the dead, it says the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, so they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and royal designation by assuming the posture of a Davidic king. Those of you that are familiar with your Old Testament history may recall that when it was time for David to uh, David gave the instructions, you make sure you get my son Solomon and you put him on my donkey and have him go and process into the city on my donkey. So uh, again, it's kind of that, that, that taking a kingly position, uh, Jesus the king uh, of David's line. And so the Messiah, that was uh, also the reason why we see Jesus uh, on a donkey is because the prophet Zechariah and said so, Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Huge crowds glorify Jesus, and it's important to note that mingled in this crowd are those who are for Jesus and those who are against him. And then, of course, you could say that there's a, uh, a third group a kind of your curiosity seekers who say, boy, we heard that he, he raised a, a man from the dead, Lazarus. We, we'd like to see this Jesus. You know? So you, you could argue that there are three uh, types of people in the crowd. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. 
So that would be the people that are for him, right? They bear, they're bearing witness. They're, they're telling people about the miracle. And the reason why the crowd went out to meet him was that they had heard that he had done this sign. Again, could be either way. It could be either they're for him or they're just curious. They want to see Jesus. Uh, this sounds like the kind of people that were attracted to Jesus by the witness of those who made known that he had performed a very great miracle indeed. But then there were others, especially of the Pharisees and the chief priests, who clearly wanted Jesus eliminated. Verse 19 says, So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that we're gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. What did these enemies of Jesus mean by gaining? Well, they had one purpose and one purpose only, and that was to destroy Jesus, to get rid of him, to make sure that he gets killed at, uh, on that day, that day before. In Scripture, it says these are the verses that immediately precede the gospel lesson that, that we heard in, in the back of the church. Just before that, it says... When the large crowd of the Jews learned that Jesus was there, when, that he was there at Bethany, just you know, the day before Palm Sunday at Bethany, uh, they came not only on account of him, but it's to put ourselves in there. So that as we're reading this thing in the Bible, we say, where, where, where am I in this, in this uh, word of God? And, and granted, you may not want to see yourself as a Pharisee or a, a chief priest trying to destroy Jesus. But look at this. It says, his disciples did not understand these things at first. And I don't know about you, but the disciples, uh, along with many in the crowd on that first Palm Sunday, were looking for a military leader who would defeat the Romans and reestablish Israel as a sovereign with suffering and and yet, Jesus says that. He, say, he makes that very clear. He says, now is my soul troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. What hour is it? It's the hour of good. Seven words of Jesus. And one word we didn't look at during Bible study is that great word of victory just before Jesus died. He said, it is finished. The Greek word which is, uh, means in literally, it, it, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. Fear not. Who said, what a waste. You know, 300 denarii. A denarii was a, a, a day's wage. So you figure today if somebody made uh, you're looking at about you know thirty to forty thousand. Uh, don't say gay. They call that law because they they want to be able to go into our schools, our our public school. It's like oh my goodness, Lord, what happened? What happened? What happened to our country? I was just discussing that with uh, one one of you about that, and uh, it's like and, and maybe you know maybe you get discouraged for other reasons. Uh, I know you're trying to get a pastor, and you're you're hoping that uh, as you put in your application for a seminary graduate, you'll hear by sometime this month uh, get your answer to that. And whatever it is that's influencing your heart to get a little down, go back to what Zechariah says: Fear not, your king has come on a donkey, and he has come to bring salvation. And he has come to take away all your sins. He's taken care of your biggest issue. The, the taking away of your sins, taking your punishment upon himself, and giving his life as a ransom that takes that, so that you can have eternal life forever with him. So that no matter what mess and feelings and problems you're dealing with, whether it's personal, an upcoming surgery, or maybe family strife, or whatever, whatever it is, trying to find consensus and how to deal with this or that issue within your family. Um, remember what the Word of God says when it says, 
Let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and now is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. And then the writer to Hebrews says, Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself. Why? Why? But it says, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. God grant it for Jesus' sake. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds, that you not be faint-hearted. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We now will uh, stand as we confess the Nicene Creed. I believe in one, one God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God, very God, begotten, not made, being one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. For us men, and for our salvation, came down from heaven, who was incarnated by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sin, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For our prayers, uh, please respond with the, the words, hear our prayer, immediately after the words, Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God Almighty, Christ our Lord did not count his equality with you something to be grasped, but he emptied himself, taking upon himself the form of a slave. Grant us a mind like his to spurn all worldly equality and humbling ourselves to find your greater portion in the life of the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Lord God, your son humbled himself to the point of death, even death on a cross. Fix the faith of your church, fix it fast upon his death for our salvation, enrich the proclamation of this gospel, and enliven our hearts to live out this faith until Christ comes again in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you sacrificed your own Son on the cross that we all would be called your children. Increase the faith of all Christian fathers that they would receive Jesus and his sacrifice for them. And so be with all of our families, both fathers and mothers, so that they can enliven uh, by their example, uh, by sharing the love of Christ with their children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God and King, your son entered into Jerusalem as the true king, poised to lay down his life for his people. Grant that same mind to those who serve in governmental authority over us. 
that they would discharge their duty, even to the least among us, so that they might receive your approval and, com and commendation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord of hosts, your son Jesus came to deliver his people from all evil. Take away the, the fear of all who suffer in this world. We commit into your hands those on our prayer list who are struggling with illness, for those who are uh, up for an upcoming surgery, and for those recovering from surgery. Have your mercy be upon them, O Lord, as our great physician. As they await the fullness of their salvation, fix their eyes upon their crucified Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. Almighty God, your Son humbly rode into Jerusalem to the shouts of Hosanna, so that he might give us righteousness and salvation by his death and resurrection. Mercifully grant that we would repent of all our sins and rejoice in his presence as he visits us with his body and blood in his holy supper, holy communion on this very special day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We praise you, Father, that you have sent your Son, not in wrath, but in mercy. As we enter this most holy week and ponder together the mysteries of your great salvation, show us the answer to your people's prayers of Hosanna, save now in the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who, having created all things, took on human flesh, and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we lord and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he gave thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take a hold of it, this is my body, which is given for you. This do as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he gave thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and keep us in praise. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.